This question is from Dregs Fan. It's a Dregs Fan. Um, in retrospect, uh, would you have done anything differently with ELP? For example, instead of recording Love Beach, uh, would you have rather uh, taken a break and reconvened a few later, a few years later? Well, uh, <coughs> I don't know why at Love Beach is sort of. Well, I do actually know. You know, it's. Um, <laughs> I think it's the package that it, it kind of comes in. You know, I think first of all, the most off-putting thing was that uh, with ELP, we were basically looked upon as very three, very uh, austere guys. You know, you number one back in those days, you. If you were photographed smiling and laughing, it didn't work. You know, it was quite a long time, if you remember, when the Beatles, you saw the Beatles actually laughing. It was quite a long time before you saw Miles Davis actually smiling, you know. I, I think one of his albums was called Miles Smiles. It was quite a long time before you, and it still is now, when you see Bob Dylan having a bit of a laugh so I think basically the package that Love Beach was put into which had the three of ELP on the cover looking like the Bee Gees um, and, and having a good laugh that in itself was like oh shock horror you know how can you do that the other aspect was we tried to ELP tried to make the crossover from being what we were because most of our contemporaries, such as uh, Genesis, Yes, had all successfully made that crossover, and they'd had hit records. Atlantic Records were in the process of uh, wanting to go that way. Radio playable material was of all importance. What ELP had come up with before, as in brain cell and surgery, the record company had to really go through it and say, well, what are we going to release as a single? We weren't a singles band. ELP were not a singles band. And Love Beach was an attempt to make a lot of radio playable material and to lighten up. That's what uh, the, the wonderful, uh, the president of Atlantic Records, Ahmed Erzgen, um, suggested. Just, he said, just go into the studio. We were living in the Bahamas at the time, mainly because the tax situation in England was so appalling. And uh, Chris Blackwell had a, a studio there in the Bahamas. So we set ourselves in there for about oh gosh six months and um, just to, came up with um, short radio playable songs as we thought and then followed it up with the uh, artwork and the the album cover and of course it uh, I don't know I think quite honestly if ELP have had the courage of their convictions I think we could have put it pulled it off but Quite honestly, I did not feel comfortable with with the musical progression. Although there are some fine moments on that album, there really are. Um, you know. Um, so you would do it differently then, if you could go back and say, okay. I think I'm not, I, I, I don't know. It, it, music is all about experimentation. If you don't try it, and uh, you, you're going to regret it. So looking back on it, I don't think I'd have done it any differently. It, it was worth a try, and because we didn't have the courage of our convictions to go on the road with it and say, well, this is this is ELP now. Right. You know, kind of the same way as Genesis managed to pull it off, and, and Yes managed to pull it off. Um, it's, you know, their music is quite... It's quite different than the way they started, whereas ELP, I don't think people were willing to accept it. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad, it's a bad album, but 
and I think all of us got cold feet. Um, and we, but as I say, if we'd have gone out on the road and said, this, forget what you've been listening to, this is a new direction forward, everybody would have gone, all right, it'll take us a while to get used to it, but because we pulled out and we didn't tour it, it, it kind of showed us, it showed everybody that, yeah, no, they made a mistake, you know. Um, okay, this question is from uh, Jim Christopoulos, co-author of Vandergraaf Generator, the book. So he, he wants to know, how did the Peter Hamill song, Empire of Delight, come about uh, with you writing the music and lyri- uh, the lyrics by Peter Hamill? Crikey. <laughs> I've forgotten all about that. Did you ever hear the finished version from his solo album? No. <laughs> no, I haven't heard it. Empire of Delight. I do remember the... Uh, yeah, I do remember writing something called that. Yeah. Maybe we can get it to you and then once oh, yeah. you like it. Or <laughs> it was an interesting piece, I think. No, I want to hear it. Okay, okay. Right. That, that, that's one of the things that got lost, I think. Mean. <laughs>